can hear you. Well, <laughs> the truth hurts, doesn't it, Ms. Carver? No, I'm kidding. Not necessarily. <laughs> no, not necessarily. Sometimes it feels good. Uh, Char, it's great to have you. And for the, I think this is the first time you haven't used like some weird colored sticky note as your uh, as your image. So that's fantastic. Yeah. Well, what's the here. occasion? Oh, you know, I cleaned off the camera. <laughs> okay. All right. Just you just took a little bit of a cleaning. Up. That's good. Okay. Um, I am recording, so uh, no obscene gestures or anything. Or I, actually, I don't, I don't care. Um, here's what we're going to talk about today for our fan club um, is uh, how to get the most mileage out of Facebook. We've done a few Facebook posts and fan clubs before, but one thing I don't know very well, and, and Lexi and, and I think Shawnee and others might have much more insight, is um, just some differences in how you promote yourself on Facebook using a boost versus an ad, how to like other pages as your business page, so on and so forth. So we want to make sure that everybody knows um, how to get the most mileage out of Facebook because any conference you go to, anyone you talk to, any anything you listen to online is like, get there on, get your stuff on Facebook, blah, blah, blah. Well, like with most things, uh, you have to have a strategy in doing it. You can't just throw things at the wall and expect it, it all to work. Um, we do uh, have a little bit of an issue today with um, what I understand is some weather in Grand Junction. Apparently, if there's a cloud in the sky, the internet goes bonkers or something like that. Um, so Lexi is going to be leading this, but it's going to be me sharing my screen, I think, because her connection Correct me if I'm wrong, Lexi is not strong enough to do the screen sharing right now. So it'll be a little bit um, herky and jerky. Obviously, if, if I'm involved, it's almost always jerky. But the uh, we'll try to make this work. And then I will go ahead and send out um, the one sheet over three pages that we create out of this anyway. So you'll have all the stuff. You can read it at your own leisure. Um, so uh, with no further ado, um, Lisa. And Let's see, anyone else? So, if you're me? I, uh, while the internet is kind of working, let me try and share my screen. I have a few Facebook pages pulled up so I can go over a few things real quick um, and see if it's going to work. Excellent. So, so, you just let me know what you need. Here we are. I can see it, so I'm hoping everybody can see Lexi's screen. Shark, can you give me a thumbs up if you see your screen? Excellent. Okay. It's all okay. you. Okay. Um. So one of the biggest questions that we have been getting recently has been, how do I go to another business page and like another page as my business page instead of liking a business page or any other page, I guess, as my personal page? Um, so I'm just going to show you how to do that really quickly. It's not super obvious, but it's super easy. So you'll uh, come to Facebook. Go ahead and search for whoever you're looking for. So I'm just on Kelly Space. Behar. She's with the Mays Group here in Grand Junction. This is her business page. Um, I've already liked it as Alexi Russ. If I want to like it as a different page, you come to the three little dots over here on the right, and then you can see like as your page as an option. Go ahead and click that, and it will pull up all of the pages that you manage. Um, since as being an agent, you probably have your personal one and your business one, so this list won't be as long. Um, but you'll just go ahead and select your business page and go ahead and submit. And has this been added to Facebook. Okay. And, and now that has been done. Because you want, you're trying to make your own business page sticky and more exposed. And so when you take your business page and like other businesses or like other organizations, there's a higher chance, obviously, that they're going to return the favor and increase and, and, and like you. And so that's what you're trying to do with Facebook is just build, build your networks. That's the whole point of it. So it, it would be very useful to do this, find 20 businesses, 30 businesses, NPOs, whatever, in the next couple of days and go like them from your business page. And then make sure that you are tending to that a couple times a week by liking their posts. It's not enough to just like the page. You have to go in and you have to be active. Facebook rewards activity. It loves it when you are on their site liking things. So make sure you are doing that if you go to a page and like it. That is exactly right. Thank you, Derek. And so on that, once you are once you already like the page, you want to come back and you want to like the post. 
you can see right here, if I wanted to go and like this post that Kelly has right here, right down in the bottom right, it says liking and commenting as Alexi Russ. So if I just do this drop down arrow, then I can choose any of the pages that I manage to then act as. And now if I like this post, it's coming from this global banker, Distinctive Properties Craig, same if I were to comment right here. Um, you can easily change it right from there. Any questions on that? Good deal, okay. I have um, a question, so, uh, Lexi. Yeah. Uh, so do you want to like it both as your personal Facebook page as well as your business page? Uh, probably depending on the content. Um, it, it's not a bad idea. That, I mean, the more activity that you're doing on there and showing interest that like Derek has said that, you know, that it's going to encourage them to do that back to you. Um, so giving them more props from personal and from business, is not a bad thing on something like this. So this is, you know, a closing day. I would definitely like this from my business page because this is a business specific post. Um, if she had something that was, you know, a distinctive angels event or um, something like that, then you might go like it as both parties. I don't think there's really a right or a wrong there. Yeah, I, when I um, go through my office's Facebook, I tend to like both as me as well as Cobal Baker Distinctive Property Sun Valley. A, I want my agent's things to get more likes. And if I'm an agent, which I'm not, thankfully, but if I'm an agent, if they see Rob Schilling personal as well as Rob Schilling real estate, I mean, all that's doing is saying this guy likes me twice as much as someone else, in a, in a manner of speaking. So if you have the time and if you figure out how to do these drop downs really quickly, it's a, it's a four second operation instead of a two second operation. So I would say do them both. Yes, I would agree. Um, another common question on Facebook and on Instagram is kind of how to use hashtags and what the importance of hashtags is. So on Twitter and on Instagram, if you use hashtags, um, you know, if somebody then searches that has hashtag like homes for sale in one of our areas, your post will show up within that. Um, so that's a really good thing to do. And then on Facebook, it's, if, from, if you're posting from your business page, um, so I'll show you an example here. Here's Joshua Fields. He's a, an agent up in Sun Valley. Um, and he was at the Sun Valley Film Festival. And so he, instead of using hashtags for the film festival, um, Stella Artois, et cetera, he actually t basically tagged these other business pages. Um, so what you will do is when you are going to tag them, you'll use the at symbol so you'll just, you know, do shift and then two for, to use the at symbol and then type the business page. That way, these business pages are then getting interaction with this post. And it also greatly increases the exposure and the interactions as far as comments and likes um, and just gets you out that much further. So if you're doing something like this, definitely, you know, go and tag basically as many other business pages that are relevant. Um, to help them out and help yourself out. They will appreciate it as, just as, as you will. Yeah, so there's that networking thing again. So basically what Josh did, and if you think he looks like Kid Rock on this video, he does in person as well. Four people stopped to ask him for his autograph while he, we were shooting this. It was, it was great. Um, but uh, <laughs> look at the number of views. There's 1.5 thousand views of this. Um, Josh is sitting right here. Did you boost this, Josh? I did, but only twenty dollars. Okay, so, so the bulk of his viewership, as it were, came because he did what Lexi just said. You don't see any hashtags up there. You come down just a bit, Lexi, so we can see. So where it says Stella Artois, Sun Valley, Idaho, Sun Valley Resort, et cetera, et cetera, it looks kind of clumpy there. But there's no hashtags. These things live a lot more vibrantly, I would say, in Facebook than a hashtag. And so when he did the at symbol and then Stella Artois. He's basically saying, hey, Stella Artois, I just, I just promoted you. And for a few folks, they're going to be like, sweet. And then all of a sudden, they're looking at Josh Fields in Sun Valley. So using that at symbol, you put the ad in, you start typing, and it should auto-populate whatever group you're looking for. It'll come with a drop-down of different things you can choose from. So when he typed in at S-T-E, it probably started with, you know, um, 
Stenson's plumbing or whatever, but then he got <coughs> to Stella Artois and then he just clicked that. He did it for a few and all of a sudden he's over a thousand views for, uh, and it's not real estate related. That's another thing that you can be thinking about. Not everything on your business page should be real estate. This is lifestyle, which you're selling as well as the real estate. So make sure that you're peppering your Facebook with a range of things. I think he got 1.5 thousand views because it was about lifestyle. If it was the townhome he was doing, he probably would not have gotten thousand views. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm feeling compelled to babble. I will stop. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Derek. That's all helpful information. Yes, Liz. I'm a total neophyte on this. So when you're using that app sign symbol and then you're uh, writing that company's name, are you doing that in the comment field or sharing it or where are you putting that? So you will do it from your personal page. So basically when you go to your business page, Robert, you'll have a box like this at the top that you'll, you'll be able to do a status update. It'll look very similar to this right here. So this is where you'll do it on your own page and you'll do the at symbol and then you'll start typing. So look, I said, start typing and then Todd, Karen, Coldwell, yada, yada, start, start popping up. Um, so there, there's a really good example right there. I start typing in Coldwell and Todd and Karen pop up. So they're doing a really good job at making sure that their keywords are, are benefiting them on Facebook. Um, so th that's all you do, Robert, right there at the top on your personal page. So and if I go to- You're calling that, um, oh, what was it? Uh, when you you're post. tagging them, that's tagging them? Yeah. 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 So, and tag has different meanings and different, like Instagram ta to tag means to put in the person's name. Facebook, it's a little bit different. Um, that we're doing here. It's not hashtagging. Again, you don't see the hashtags because hashtags are a little bit passive. Someone has to click on that to, to see what else it's connected to. So this I think is a really, it's an underused way to make sure that uh, you're reaching a larger audience. And again, this will all be detailed in the sheet that we send out with the recording so that if this has gone over your head a little bit, we'll try to put some imagery in there too so you can uh, have a walkthrough on how to do this. Perfect. So that was um, a perfect introduction then. So um, as you heard Josh say, he did boost that video that he had posted. Um, so the difference between a Facebook ad and a Facebook boost um, is another extremely common question. Um, and it's something that actually is a very common online debate of what is the difference and when should you use it? So. We have a one sheet on this, um, and I'm just going to kind of give you an overview of when sh you should use boosting versus when you should use an actual Facebook ad. Um, basically, in short, the ability to boost a Facebook post is just a simplified extension of the Facebook ad system. Um, so it was designed to be less intimidating than the Facebook ad system, um, so not so overwhelming to some business, small business owners. Um, it's to try and encourage more people to use the platform. However, there are some differences between it. Um, so when you boost a post, you, you, always, you can only boost a post that has already been posted. So for example, I went on our Coldwell Banker Distinctive Properties page. Um, we posted this video from Corner Office and I can boost this post now. I cannot go and take this post and run a Facebook ad on it from here. I can create a new Facebook ad about this same content, but I can't just take it from here. All I can do from here is boost. Uh, so when you go and you, does someone have a question? Is that, no? no please okay. mute yourself if you're not uh, talking. It sounds like there's some weird noise back there. Thanks. Sorry to bother you again. Uh, so with the Facebook it. boost, you're just gonna come in and you're gonna choose who you target. It's much more limited who you target through boosting than you do through, through the ads. Um, you choose a budget, a couple of days, however long you wanna run the ad, um, and then you boost it. When you do a Facebook ad, you have a lot more options as far as choosing an ad objective. 
So when you do an ad, you can choose whether you want traffic to your website, whether you want conversions on your website, whether you just want engagement with the post or you just want exposure of the post. Um, when you boost, basically the overall goal is exposure and engagement. So th that is what the goal of a boost is going to be. Um, the goal, Facebook, their algorithm is not going to be focused on driving people to your website with a boost. It's going to be focused on getting this content in front of people who their Facebook history shows they would engage with this post, meaning they would like it or comment on it or share it. Um, when you do an ad and you choose traffic or conversion as your goal, Facebook will then show the ads in front of people who are in need of that product or service who would click on that and get back to your website. Um, so there's kind of the difference there. You also have the, have the ability to choose placement with an ad and you don't have that ability when you boost. Um, so when you boost a post, you can just check or uncheck an Instagram placement, um, a desktop and mobile Facebook newsfeed. Placements are just a given. Um, if, if you do an ad, you, you get to choose whether it's in the newsfeed or if it's a side ad, if it's Instagram feed, an Instagram story, if it's an Instagram article, um, a messenger ad, and an audience network ad. Um, so you have a lot more options within the Facebook ads. Um, with, with Facebook boost, you, can, you can't overlap audience types. So if you in an ad wanted to target people in Seattle and in Texas um, that make this amount of money and that's one certain audience, and you wanted to target people just within you know, your own area so that you're getting more exposure, you can choose two separate audiences in an ad. In a boost, you just choose more broad targeting. 99% um, of the time, Facebook ads is, is a better way to go um, if you're if you're trying to promote something specific. If you just go and you make a post onto your wall and then it recommends that you boost the post, um, that's probably because that post is doing well and it, people are engaging with it. So Facebook is just encouraging you to get it out further. So that's not ever a bad thing or a bad idea to boost those that you already have on there. But if you have something specific that you want to get in front of a certain demographic, in front of their eyes, a Facebook ad is going to be the better way to go. Um, the other thing is with Facebook ads, you can create a video campaign um, and then you can retarget people who have watched 75% more or, the, or more of the video. Um, you can't do that with a boosted post. If you boost a post, you can boost a video, but you can't create an actual video campaign. So you, the retargeting is the biggest difference there. So Derek has all of this information in a one sheet. Um, it's, it's longer than, than the words that just came out of my mouth and it's more detailed. Um, so you guys can, will have that at, you know, to reference. Um, does anyone have any questions on that? Can you show us what an ad page looks like? What an ad page? Like if you were going to do an ad, just so we can have yes. a visual of that. And then you said sure. you so this right here, as you saw me click boost post below, so that is how you would boost it, just literally right there. If we were going to go create an ad, you just go to Facebook on your home page, ads manager. So you, this will be in a different place, probably on everyone's Facebook. Um, if it's, if you don't see it right there, right off the bat, you'll just go to the very bottom, and there will be a blue line that says create ad. Um, welcome to the new ads manager. So big surprise, Facebook has made some changes as they, as they typically do. Um, so this is in here, I'm gonna move this thing out of the way, is ads manager. So what we would do here is you would go and you would create an ad, self-guided or select create. Oh, this is completely new. So we'll just do this one. The moment you think you know Facebook, think again. 
And they do this <laughs> no us engaged. There's no lie. Like they change things so that you have to spend more time on Facebook. I'm convinced. It's probably a conspiracy theory, but that's my advice. Um, while she's working on that, I had a question. If anybody has um, seen where they're stopping the ad because for some reason I missed clicking a button saying that it's um, equal opportunity or something like that. Has anybody seen those requests? Yeah, we've run into that a few times here in Sun Valley where the, from a boost standpoint, it says, nope, this doesn't comply because, because I don't know why we can't figure it out. It, unfortunately, real estate is part of housing. And so if you mention family or if you mention something, sometimes Facebook goes, oh, you're being discriminatory. Um, so it's a tough thing. We've, we've made it work by um, fighting the, or saying we are compliant and, sending something in, right. but it's certainly not streamlined. It takes a little bit of work and a lot of head scratching, so. I was gonna and ask if you had to put any extra dialogue in the ad. Sorry? Did you have to put any extra dialogue in the ad? Any disclaimer? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we actually had to take some stuff out and that's hard, like if you put a photo with some text over it and it becomes a photo, you can't just take that text out, so. So, um, like one of the things we did when we sent someone sent out a market report that said, I think residential homes or something, I don't know, but that's what it was. And it was on the photo. And so they had to scratch the whole thing. Um, Thank you. So on that, like you said, Derek, you have to take out some of the text sometimes. So if you have, you know, like perfect family home, that could be something that you need to take out of there. Um, you know, single living apartment, that could be something you need to take out of there. Um, the other thing that you can do is when that pops up, a lot of times there's a button that says request manual review. I've done that a few times and then I'll get a message saying your ad has been approved um, because it's not actually violating anything. Sometimes the algorithm thinks that you're doing something that you're actually not. Um, and so sometimes that manual review can, can help and, and get it approved for you. Uh, but otherwise, like Derek was saying, sometimes you have to switch up the verbiage. And then when you're doing an ad, you need to make sure that the image is an image and doesn't have a bunch of text on top of the image. Um, that it doesn't allow you to do that. The text needs to be in the actual text section hmm. right here. Okay. So um, keep that in mind and don't, don't get too fancy with your images trying to put big text over it, which is fun. But... Um, I've found that if you put like dysfunctional family home, they're totally good with that. They, they, they're <laughs> oh I goodness! Don't discriminate from any against anyone. <laughs> so you can see this is a little bit more um, in depth than just boosting the post. Um, so on another fan club, we'll go totally in depth on how to create a specific Facebook ad. Um, and the different ways that you can do it and retarget it. Um, that'll be something that will be, will turn into a training video as well. Um, you can see over here, you know, traffic was my goal. Um, you choose a specific audience, set the placement, et cetera. Um, we also have a grid that, let me move this over here, that we will get to everybody that tells you the best time to post, post to Facebook. So over here is the legend basically. So the darker is the better time. So you can see around one o'clock and three o'clock um, are usually really good times to post. The mornings seem to be okay. And then the evenings, not as great. Um, overall best days are Thursday, Friday, and Sunday. So we'll send this to you guys with the one sheet as well. Um, again, this is something that completely changes all the time. Um, so with doing these fan clubs, we'll make sure that we have this stuff for you so that you are staying, you know, on top of best practices as far as posting goes um, to Facebook. So this will be included in the one sheet. Um, so that is basically, you know, a good overview there of getting into Facebook, how to be using it as your business page, um, getting more engagement and likes to your business page. If you do not have a business page as an agent, um, it's, you need one. You need one. So make sure that you get with me and schedule a meeting if you don't have one, and I'll be happy to help you get that set up. 
We do have, a, a, I think, a fan club or a tech talk dedicated to that as well. So I'll put that in the, in the email uh, with the recording. So uh, it is illegal, according to Facebook bylaws, to do business from your personal pages. And so when you are doing your real estate stuff on your personal page, you're technically violating their, what the whole point of Facebook is, which is social. So that's why they have the whole business side for it. Uh, so Ooh, it's illegal to use it from your personal page or to do it from, it's, it's it, illegal is probably the wrong word, but Facebook will ding you. They will, they can take you down. Yeah. For what? For trying to do business from your personal, personal page. Okay, okay. Yeah. But I tag my personal page in everything. Sure. So like if it's a video, I tag my personal. Yep. Tag, tagging is fine, okay. but putting posts on your personal page that are promotional or trying to do business, they do not want you doing that. Can I share and my, my personal page, my business page? Like if I post a cool article from Shay Blackston, I can share it on Dana? Yes. And this is a good example too of, you know, Josh's video that he did. Uh, this is totally appropriate to be on his business page and his personal page. That's totally fine. Um, if he was just posting, you know, hey, I got this new listing, it's blah, 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 blah. That probably meant more for the business page. Yeah. So, okay. What else do we uh, ask some questions? You've got the expert here, Lexi Liu, and um, we're talking about Facebook. So what else do people want to know? There's been a couple of really good questions so far. So what about open houses? Can you post that on your personal page that you're at an open house? Yeah, yeah, you can definitely post that you're at an open house on there. And so what you can do, um, what I would suggest is you go to your personal um, Coldwell Banker website. So I'm just going to go and search for a random property just as an example here. Uh, but you would want to be on your own personal website, so you're driving traffic back to that. Um, click into the listing detail page, and then you can take this link, copy it. Let me get back to our actual Facebook, so I don't act, post that on somebody else's. And then you can go and you can pull that in. It'll pull in the image of the property, so you can see it's fetching the preview. You didn't know what. Our internet, as you know, is great today. So it, there, uh, things like this take a little more Wi-Fi, a little more time. Um, so it, when you pull this in, it'll pull in fr from your personal website, and you can say, you know, open house today, one to four at, you know, address, um, and promote it. And then if somebody clicks on this, they'll go ahead and they'll get back to this listing detail page on your website. Uh, how, that shouldn't be posted on your business page. Like you're allowed to put that on your personal page. Now I'm a little. No, that should be on your business page. Okay, thank you. That thank you. It's a personal. Somebody said personal page, and that's why we we're confused. Yeah. So your Lexi, personal before, website. Oh. Yeah, Lexi, well, Before you leave this page here, hover over the be social button. Um. This is another super easy way to do it. Now, and then you see the share on your timeline in the top left there, everybody. That, then you can change it. No, I want to I want to share it on a page I manage, which is your business page. How can you change the image? Though? I always I always learn that if you're doing something, that you could put it on your personal page. Well. So, yeah, I, I mean, uh, it's not a straight listing. It's like, I'm at an open house, come visit me, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. And again, like Mark Zuckerberg is not going to come out of the sky on a chariot and <laughs> strike you down because you're promoting an open house. But for the, the rule of thumb is if you are trying to sell something, a home, your child, whatever, uh, that should be on your business page. But tag the personal. That's how I have but, it. Yeah. But tag your personal one. So, Lexi, can you show us how to tag without confusing the issue? Because we talked about tagging in a different way. Can you show us how to tag an image? Tag an image. Yeah, so go to your Facebook. So here's the one thing, Derek, if you to tag yourself from a, a business page, Business pages can only tag business pages, and personal pages can only tag personal pages. So 
So if you post something as your business page, let me get out of that. Um, all right, let's get back to here. If you post something as your business page to share it onto your personal one or to tag yourself, you need to come down here and actually act as yourself again, not your business, and then you'll be able to edit the post and tag yourself. I edit in the post and do that, Dana Buster. So yeah. you would go right here, and then you'll have an edit option since this would be your actual post. Um, and then where all of this text is, if you start typing your name, it will auto-populate just like if you do the at symbol and two other businesses. Does that, so you can only tag other business pages as a business page. You can only tag personal people and pages as your personal page and itself. Yeah. And so we will be um, doing a quiz on all of this at the end of the fan club. Um, if you can get 30% correct, you are going to be top of the mark. Because it's, look, it's, it's, you got to spend a lot of time, just like any of the other programs, IQO, CD Exchange, whatever, you got to spend a lot of time figuring this out. Lexi can talk about this pretty quickly. That's her job is to know Facebook. If you do this once a day for a couple minutes, it's always going to be like, what? Because it's just loaded with complexity and layers. Um, that's, just part of the, that's just part of the deal. At any rate, we kind of got off track here. You can do that be social thing. It takes it right to the Facebook. Um, so that's one way to do it. Or grab the link and put it in your Facebook. But make sure you're deleting all that URL stuff because it's just noise. Facebook fetches whatever the site is, puts it there, and then you can delete the URL and be a little cleaner. You can, and that's a good point. And but I think showing that, Derek, I think that that it really is. I'm glad that you said that because this it probably is the best way to post it to Facebook um, and to talk about an open house or anything because it is going to take it right to Facebook. It doesn't bring in the weird URL. It's already you know right here, and then you can just type in your text. So you don't have to remember to delete that weird URL. Right. So question here, though, the other one brought an image in. This one doesn't look like it's bringing an image in. Sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. I have run into this with Facebook a, a number of times. Um, sometimes if you just go and put, put it in a second time, it'll pull it in. Um, sometimes once you actually post it to Facebook, it'll pull in the image. If it doesn't, you can go in and you can edit the post and add an image to it. Uh, it's totally one of those, you know, technical online things that is a little finicky. A little finicky. That's what this site should be called, a little finicky. So, okay, so we got really into the weeds with this, um, but there's a lot you can do and, and to, to promote yourself. Lexi, can you talk at all about uh, best practices in terms of frequency? You showed us the time chart, which is awesome. Um, and the reason for that is people are at lunch at work and they're looking at Facebook and then come three o'clock on Thursday, Friday, they're starting to think about their weekends. That's why those are the darker areas. But in terms of my business page, how many times a week or a day should I be posting stuff? What's overkill in your uh, esteemed opinion? Well, so Tom's very best practices um, that I was just reading recently say that you should re really, if you really want to be getting yourself out there, um, you need to kind of abide by the 4% rule, meaning that what you're posting, only about 4% of that is going to be, you know, seen by, by everybody. Um, you post one thing, only 4% of your followers are going to see it. You post another, only 4% are going to see it, etc. So he recommends right now that you do almost about two posts a day, um, including Facebook Live. So that's definitely a lot, um, and you know that takes a lot of content writing and creation. Um, so we you know, we have Business Ignite that can help you with that. But again, the Facebook Lives are huge right now, and to be able to put that onto Facebook Live and to, onto your Instagram Story um, it will really boost you on on Facebook as far as SEO goes, and will probably get you a lot more engagement. Um, so I would say that. Facebook Lives, if you aren't doing it, that's something to really get into. So Devine, like you were asking about an open house and promoting that on personal versus business, I think that if you're going to promote an open house, doing a link like this is great. And then when you are at the open house, you know, open your phone and get on Facebook and do a live and, you know, talk, show your face. I'm at the open house and, you know, walk around and that sort of thing. So um, 
doing more of those lives, if you can do that every day to every other day, that's really going to help your engagement and exposure on Facebook. Um, and then, you know, we we have blog posts on cobalbanker.com. You can look at the Blue Matter blog. We have blog posts on each one of our individual areas. So cobalbankervale.com, gjhomes.com, et cetera. You can take the content from there and post it onto your Facebook um, or copy it onto your blog and then post it to Facebook. There's a couple of different places you can go to just grab content. Um, but if someone is, is, you know, looking at your page and thinking about who to work with, you definitely want to have quite a bit of content on there. Um, I would say, you know, four posts a week is the bare minimum. Yeah, so that and, kind of helps? That's, yeah, that's super helpful. Thanks. And I know that some of you um, like doing this and doing it every day or twice a day is, is well within your wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. Others maybe not so much. So do what you're comfortable with, but um, it is a it is a useful platform, and so make sure you're just doing some of it. Lexi, can you back out? Can you get off this page and just show us if I want to go do a, a Facebook Live? Do it. Is that only from my phone, or can I do it from here, my, my computer with? Well, camera? you need a camera and a mic. So from your phone is definitely going to be the easiest. You can see right here the live video. So let me delete this <laughs> because I don't want to post that. Um, but if I click this live video right here, unable to find camera. Um, so, you know, my camera is not plugged in right now because our internet is not working. Um, if, if, if you have a camera and a mic on your computer, so Shar, it looks like you might have a camera and mic available on your computer, you could probably do it right from there. Um, otherwise, from your phone is going to be the easiest. Okay. And so having the Facebook app on your phone uh, will make this as seamless as possible. And then you can just be doing this, you know, show things uh, and it goes, and then it goes right to your Facebook feed. You don't have to then post it later. It's happening live. One thing you need to watch out for is your connection. Um, we learned the hard way that if your connection, internet connection is bad and you're doing a Facebook live, you basically look like a, a cartoon, a smeary cartoon. And it's just frustrating for viewers. So make sure you've got a good connection before you do Facebook Live. Um, in terms of video, you know, a lot of people will grab a YouTube link, let's say, and paste it in their Facebook post, which is great. But if you have the real video, Facebook will reward you for actually uploading the video itself to your Facebook page as opposed to grabbing it from uh, YouTube. Because Facebook wants the content, right? They want the stuff to be there. Doesn't mean you can't do the YouTube thing, but um, they do reward direct uploads. Am I correct on that, Ms. Lexi Lou? That's correct. And that, so the other thing with that is, um, yeah, so basically they'll push you higher to the top, Derek, if you, are, if you upload directly. And then the other thing is, um, is someone can watch it directly within Facebook. So. You saw me just click on that if I wanted to upload a photo or a video. So if Scott is doing a video for you, um, if, or if you're doing a video yourself, you'll want to make sure that you have the file to save to your computer and not just the YouTube link, because then you can see right here, if I want to upload a photo or a video, it takes me to my desktop. So then I need to go and actually find, you know, where I save the video, and then I can upload it directly into there. Okay, so that's good. Otherwise, Sorry, go ahead. You can just, sorry, no, you're fine. Otherwise, you can just, you know, super easily take this YouTube link um, and just paste it into there. And then, you know, it fetches the preview. And then, like Derek had said, you know, make sure that you take this away um, and say something specific about the video. Right. So, and then one more thing, and Lexi, we hadn't talked about this, but I want everybody to know that you can take your a post from Facebook and you can grab the, that link to that specific Facebook post and email it if you need to or send it as a text. So Lexi, go to one that, um, we don't need to see Shannon's uh, daughter here as cute as she is, but let's go, let's say I've got a video on my Facebook, okay? And I wanna, um, I wanna send that link to just that post to someone. So here's how you do it, you, okay. That's, I was going to say, Lexi, just right click. You don't even have to go there. You don't have to click on the okay. link itself. Just right click on the post. 
Okay, right, right click. click right here, Dan. Yep. Okay. Um, and then you see the drop down. You, the first three you don't worry about, but copy link address. Okay, click that. Okay, and copied. It, it should be copied. And now you can go to your email and send that to someone. Put paste the link. Okay, and so, um, and then, so instead of having to go like, you just saw something really cool on Facebook, maybe it's your post or someone else's and you wanna send it to someone and you don't wanna use the share or the whatever, you can, you can grab the link of the post, just like she said, and send it as an email or text that way. I found it really useful sometimes um, when I don't wanna futz around with all the other page management crap, okay, so. Very good to know. Okay, so um, we'll put all this in. It's no longer a one sheet, it'll be an 18 sheet, uh, but super <laughs> really, really fun. So, any other questions? It's 11.41, we don't need to gr drag this out till noon, um, but what else do you have on your mind about Facebook, anyone? Who's driving on the other end? So when you're doing a, an, a Facebook ad, uh, you said you could go to two different markets. Can you go to like 10 different markets or identify uh, 10 different markets? For instance, the reason I'm asking is that we've got these feeder markets into the Vail Valley and it'd be great to identify or have those 17 different markets and then do a blast to all 17 of those, for instance. Yes, so you definitely can. So within one ad, you can choose as many different audiences as you want. Um, you can spread it out or make it as, as specific as you want. The only thing with that, though, Robert, is you want to make sure that your what you're spending then matches how far you are pushing it out. Um, because if you only are spending twenty dollars and you're trying to go to seventeen markets, you're not going to get very much exposure within each one of those. If you're spending $100 and going to 17 markets, you're going to get much more, um, I guess you're going to show up much more f frequently for that. So that's something to keep in mind, um, you know, the budget versus how far you're trying to go. Okay. All right. Excellent stuff. Um, none of this is easy. Uh, try it out. And the best thing about the boost or the, or the ad promotion is, it's fairly inexpensive, and I realize I'm not writing your checks for you, but to do 20, do the same thing. Do the same post, one as a boost and one as an ad, and see, see what kind of return you get. Spend 20 bucks on the boost and 20 bucks on the ad and see, see how it affects the, the post. Um, you, you might find that, oh, boosting does work better for me, or you might find that doing the ad. Lexi did say that for the bulk of what we do, doing an ad is the wiser choice, but it's also the more complicated choice. So you have to weigh how much time you want to put into it, how much you want to learn, because the boost can pretty much be done after eight margaritas even, you can boost. But the, doing an ad, I wouldn't drink. So that's just me though. Lexi, can you go to a page that you manage, a business page, and view it? as the admin versus what a visitor would see. Just wanna see if it pops up for you. <clears throat> this is Josh in Sun Valley. And I was new to Facebook. I didn't even have a Facebook presence until getting my real estate license a couple of months ago. But mine starts, starts at the top page education and I don't see it there. You might wanna find that. Um, I'm a firm believer that Facebook's algorithms reward you for doing what they want you to do. And so I'm on week six and I've just been you know, spending an hour a week really is it, doing some of the stuff they recommend. Since you're not an admin on mine, you're not gonna see that. Derek can see it over here um, yeah. on week six. Um, so it, they're just little simple tasks, but I'm a firm believer, like we were saying, when you embed videos versus upload them, that sometimes you get better hits. Um, so just something you might want to look at. I'm not sure how you would get that up there. I imagine a lot of you that were Facebooking personally before business might have clicked by that and said quit showing me this I didn't do that and like I said I'm on week six maybe it's rewarding me maybe it's not but it's just a little time each week to do a few simple tasks and I think it puts me closer to the top uh, with people that I've liked and friends 
I think that that's totally accurate. I bet it is definitely rewarding you. Um, can you say that again, Josh? What is the little button at the top called? Mine, it's just the very first, so right above where you're seeing uh, share photo, advertise your business. On mine, there's another block, I guess we'll call it above it, and it just is titled page education. The little icon is a graduation cap, like from the cap and gown. Um, I have never turned that on, but I suspect others have turned it off. Yeah, I've not seen it. Click oh. on that add button. Is it there? No, that's going to add email me, book a reservation. Yeah. Um, so we'll have to play with that, but I think it rewards you. Um, but again, I'm new, so maybe it's because I started my page uh, in the you know early 2018. Maybe those of you that had it in 17 and years past aren't getting that, and you're going to have to go in and find it maybe on the left side, about services, videos, somewhere over there. Um, but like I said, nothing has been really weird that they've asked me to do, uh, but I feel like they're rewarding me for doing what, going through their six week education class. And it even has on mine an explore all weeks. So those of you that have a page up, you know, the first one is just saying, go out and like stuff. Well, you've already done that. You can then click possibly to week two, whatever, and just pull little nuggets out of each week. But I'm just doing it as it tells me uh, up here. So. Okay. Um, awesome. And, okay. Very good to know. Yeah. I'll get a screenshot of that from Josh so you can see what that looks like. And that'll make this the 19 page sheet. <laughs> Perfect. Hey guys, we have a question over in GJ. Um, I wanted to ask, um, how does Facebook handle um, delayed posts? Do they favor them or not? Like in the delayed page? In the business um, page, you can choose when to post. So when you're saying that things are good at noon and I'm busy, click on where it says publish. Right below the drop down arrow for pub publish schedule. So when you're doing that on your business page, like could I do stuff on Sunday to scatter through the week around noon? Because that's a better way for me to get these up and loaded. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, you, absolutely. Yeah, I don't they think don't, it's Facebook doesn't it. care. No, I don't think so. The, nope. The, it's okay. gonna, it's gonna, as soon as it posts, the algorithm will be the same whether you posted it right away or scheduled it out. So you can absolutely schedule them all out on a Sunday and get your week all ready. So we set it and forget it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, folks, that's been Very a lot. Good. Yeah, I know my brain's filled up. Lexi, that's been awesome. Any last um, nuggets of wisdom, or should we uh, call it a day? I think that's a pretty good overview. And as I said, guys, you know, I will be doing, you know, a Facebook and social media online um, fan club uh, once a month at least. And I will go into much more detail on how you create ads and retarget and things like that. But for now, make sure that you have a business page get in there and do some stuff and make sure you know how to go back and forth between personal and business and, and get used to the functionality. Okay. Excellent. So stop sharing for now, Lexi, and then I'll say goodbye and uh, all that good stuff. <coughs> Let's see here. How do I stop up sharing? Top. Up at the top. Should be Where? stop share, the red button. View options, do that drop down. Lexi is such a generous person, she finds it impossible to stop sharing. It's one of the things <laughs> I've always loved about her. Um, so, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and end the meeting anyway, and Lexi will just share into the sunset. Hey, um, thanks so much uh, for being here this week. You'll get this in a little bit, and uh, just keep up the great work. We're almost done with the first quarter. I hope people are getting close to their goals. Uh, we're just feeling really good about all the offices right now. So great job. Keep it up and uh, finish this first quarter strong. Okay. Thanks, Lexi. It was awesome. Bye, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Let me know what you need. Thanks.